Hello, welcome to the Dayton Unit NAACP monthly community meeting uh, titled Community Activities for Youth and Children. Uh, there's a lot going on here in the city of Dayton and a lot of activities that our youth and children can be engaged in. And the person who's gonna lead us in this discussion this evening is none other than our first vice president and community coordination chair, Maddie P. White. Maddie? Thank you, Dr. Ford. And I want to begin by saying thank you to our panel of presenters. Um, thank you for being so gracious and sharing your time and coming into this meeting to talk about the various programs and the activities within your programs that are provided for children and youth. Um, I'm going to introduce you just by name and then I will give you an opportunity after I do the complete introduction uh, by name for you to share uh, about your program. Um, we know that we are in a time where it is important to engage our young people in productive, constructive uh, programs and activities, particularly in light of what's happening in our society. One of the things that we want to do is to promote peace. We want to work toward increasing the peace. And when we do that with our young people who are in the developing stages, we're likely to have a more positive impact first in the home, then in the community, in our state and across the world at large. So I'm very appreciative again for you coming in and sharing with us your time and providing valuable information to the community. And then I have an ask that I will put on the front end of the presentation. And that is that uh, in your programs, of course, the work that you're doing does promote peace, but we're going to ask that you just emphasize and highlight the work of peace uh, in the various activities and the various programs and with the projects that children engage in with your organizations. So I began with the uh, saying hello to Dr. Stacy Worley, who is the director of the Office of Male and Females of Color. And if you could just wave your hand so people don't have to scan looking for your name across the screen. Thank you. Our next person that I'm going to uh, share is Mrs. Carol Pruitt, who is the director of St. Margaret Episcopal Church Summer Camp Program. There she is. Thank you, Carol. Mr. Malcolm Keith is the director of the Dayton Urban Young Life Program, and he's going to tell us all about that program and the benefits. Um, then we have Ms. Dana Prasinski, who is the director for the City of Dayton Parks and Recreations. Ms. Prasinski, um, let's see, do I see you? I know you're here. There she is. Thank you, Ms. Prasinski. Um, then we have Mr. David Jenkins. Mr. David Jenkins, you know, if you go to the Northwest uh, library, you're going to see Mr. Jenkins, who is working in the children's area. So thank you for being with us. And then this gentleman, Mr. Demetrius Uqua, has an awesome program that I'm excited about um, our community hearing more about. He is the director of the Montgomery County Male and Female Leadership Academies. And uh, I wish that uh, he had been able to show some of his young people and their attire is so impressive but he'll talk more about that. And then we have Miss Kenya Baker. Kenya is gonna tell us about her program, which is Knowledge Cipher. Uh, she's with the Dayton Unified Power. Pam Sloan may be joining us a little later, who's gonna give us some information on the Little John Jr. NAACP Youth Council. And last but certainly not least, we have Miss Tawana Branham, who is with Move Forward Thurgood Marshall, but she's also the co-advisor for the NAACP High School Chapter. So we're just gonna go round robin and, um, you know, kind of like in school, be ready because you don't know who I'm gonna call on. <laughs> so let's start with um, Ms. Uh, Dana Prasinski, um, who is the director of Dayton Parks and Recreation. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, as Ms. White indicated, my name is Dana Prasinski. I'm recreation program coordinator uh, for the city of Dayton's Department of Recreation. Um, we have a lot going on this summer. We're really excited to invite people back into our buildings, back into our programs, because um, we haven't seen a lot of people for a while uh, due to COVID. So um, I'm going to invite you also to view our website. We do have our program guide uploaded to our website, which is what I'll be referencing tonight. 
Um, our program guide can be found at uh, Dayton.gov, uh, cityofdayton.gov slash creation. And we have all this information that I'm about to share with you on that website. Some of our community events that are coming up, we have movies for families at the Lori Recreation Center, July 15th, and the Northwest Recreation Center, August 26th. This is an opportunity for us to be able to enjoy the great outdoors and our resources in our parks and uh, be able to join each other as a community, but in fresh air as well. So we're not all up on top of each other. Also have our music series coming up that'll be available um, we at the Levitt Pavilion, we have a great partnership with them, the Dayton Jazz Festival, which is Sunday, June 12th, the Blues Festival, which is Sunday, July 24th, the Funk Festival, which is August 14th, and then the Reggae Festival, which is September 4th. Um, so these are programs that are highlighted for our entire community um, and also family focused. So it's an opportunity for us to enjoy each other's company again in the great outdoors. Um, some more youth-centered programs that we have coming up is we do have our summer camp. So our summer camp, we start as early as three years old, all the way through 12 years old. Registration is currently open um, and spots are going quick. Our first four weeks are pretty much booked up. Um, the fee is $80 a week, but we do have what we call camperships. So families that have uh, various income um, differences, we do have opportunities to uh, provide discounts up to 50% based on their 2021 tax uh, income tax return. Um, in addition, we have swim lessons that are currently registering for our summer A session. We start swim lessons as early as six months old, all the way through however long people live, because there's never a, never a deadline when you can learn how to swim. And that's my specialty is our aquatics programs. We're excited to um, welcome people back into our general mission swim. That's always very popular for our uh, youth in the community that are looking for an opportunity to cool off in our pools. And uh, these programs highlight life-saving skills. So when we invite youth into our programs, especially in our swim programs, not only are we encouraging peace, but we're encouraging wellness through fitness, but we're definitely encouraging skills as far as swimming in a safe lifeguarded area and we're teaching people how to react if or when they fall in the water how to keep themselves safe so beyond over and beyond knowing how to do freestyle breaststroke just simply how to react how to stay buoyant how to get yourself the help that you might need if you should fall into a body of water um, beyond that, we offer lifeguard courses for youth as early as 15. And again, that goes through um, however people, long people live and they're eligible for lifeguard course because they can swim. Um, I'm not sure if you saw our interview on WHIO, we are experiencing a nationwide lifeguard shortage. And this actually occurred prior to the pandemic. So we are definitely looking to get people certified so that we can have pools open and operational for our community members. And we're struggling with that at the moment, I'm gonna be honest. So we definitely need help with lifeguards. If you know of anybody, send them my way. Um, additionally, another community event we're getting ready to launch very soon is our first Juneteenth program. And what we are doing is we are providing canvases to anybody that wants to create art and have it on display at our Juneteenth event, which will take place on June 17th um, at the Northwest Recreation Center, which is 1600 Princeton Drive. And we're gonna have the art on display. So if you're interested in creating some art to display at our event, feel free to stop by one of our recreation centers for a canvas. You don't have to use the canvas, um, but we are offering it as a resource. And then by June 10th, we're asking everybody to have their art back to us so we can have it ready for display at our open house on June 17th from 5.30 to 8 p.m. This is a free event. Um, beyond that, we have youth sports. Our Jim Nichols Tennis Center is open. So we have pickleball and tennis, and um, we are getting ready for uh, flag football in the fall. Um, currently, our baseball program is underway and our soccer program is underway, um, but we are thinking ahead to the fall about um, our flag football program and then our basketball program that operates in the winter. So we have lots happening at the City of Dayton's Department of Recreation. 
I really hope that you can join us and um, we'll look forward to seeing you this summer. Thank you, uh, Dana. And also, too, I just want to offer to our presenters an apology on my behalf. I gave you the wrong time uh, in terms of logging on, so please forgive me. Uh, yeah, stretch, David. <laughs> okay, so uh, is there a question? I, I do believe there was a question in the chat for Dana. Um, Felicia, do you want to um, state your question? Or would you like for me to ask that question for you? Felicia? I did read the question about asking about youth membership. So okay. um, it depends uh, if they're coming in to utilize a specific service. Um, there may be charge. Uh, for instance, our swim lessons do have a charge related to them. Um, we do have, it's $25 for five, five weeks of swim lessons. However, um, if they're just kind of coming in to hang out in the building, there may not be a charge associated. Um, our general admission swim does have a charge of $2. Um, so it kind of depends on what the program is, what the services that they're seeking. Um, so there's no real straightforward answer there. I apologize. Okay, I appreciate it. I just wanted to um, just give this opinion. I think sometimes charging youth, um, especially in certain communities, um, it it, it maybe deterred them from coming into a safe place and um, just being out on the streets because our youth need more consistent active activities. But I thank you for the activities that you have presented here tonight, but um, to have camp leaders and something more of a positive within our um, system for our students. So that's what I, my opinion, but thank you for that information. No problem. And actually you just triggered um, a thought for me. We're actually in progress in creating a team set in the Northwest Recreation Center. It's not gonna be ready for this summer, unfortunately, um, but we are in progress of developing a team center, which will include kind of um, a lounging area. It'll include an area for esports through video games. It'll create a video content station. So they'll be able to create videos for social media or for school. Um, and be able to edit those videos on site. So that's some exciting resources we're preparing to offer for our teens in the area that we currently don't have uh, for teens at the moment, but we are working towards that goal and we're really excited about it. Okay. All right, we're gonna to move to David Jenkins who's gonna to talk to us about what the Dayton Metro Library offers. Good evening, good evening, everybody again. Um, Thank you, uh, Maddie. My name is David Jenkins. I'm an ISA here at uh, the Northwest Branch, 2410 Philadelphia Drive. Uh, we have a lot going on. I'm going to try to keep my composure, uh, but I would like to think uh, Northwest is probably one of the most involved uh, branches within um, you know, our community here. Uh, there's so much that we have going on for the summer. I want to start off uh, by letting uh, everyone know that we do have some lunch and food programs. Uh, one of the first programs is the DPS Summer Lunch Program, and then we also have CHA. Uh, CHA is going to be Tuesdays uh, only from 4.30 to 5.30. That's when uh, parents and children can come in and enjoy a meal here at the Dayton Metro Library of the Northwest Branch. Also, uh, the DPS Summer Lunch Program is going to take place every day, well, sorry, Monday through Friday uh, here at the Northwest Branch. And it's gonna be, I believe from one o'clock to 1.30. Um, let me make sure, yes, one to 1.30. It'll be, yep, one to 1.30. So please, 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 please bring your, your children, your friends, uh, teens, this is really popular for teens in the summer because of the pandemic. We've had to make, um, you know, adjustments uh, and read up and stock on a lot of things, but we have a lot of that. We've also been able to, to serve the community in that way. And, you know, that's exciting, but that's just food. Let's get to like some really good stuff. So one of the, one of the most exciting things that we have coming up for the summer um is uh we have a sharks program coming june 25th uh we are working with an aquarium 
Uh, and they are actually going to bring real live sharks into Northwest where we're actually going to be able to touch, you know, some shark teeth that they have and actually learn about sharks here at the Northwest Library. That's going to be very exciting. Uh, also, we have a program called Fish War Shoes. It's going to be an art program uh, where we have an artist coming in and uh, allowing children to express themselves via art that's one of the main major things here the staff here at northwest uh we are very artistic we have a lot of um <laughs> abilities beyond the bookshelves and so uh we take pride in art because we believe that it's a form of expression uh and when you're not allowed to express sometimes you you can find other ways to express. So that's one of the main things here at Northwest where we try to create that platform for expression and, and art uh, for, for children. Also, we have a maker fair. This is really exciting for all of our STEM uh, kids and STEM teens and uh, uh, those alike. Uh, July 18th through the 22nd, we have a STEM making program, which is gonna deal with robotics, which is gonna deal with engineering, which is gonna deal with computers. There's so much that's gonna take place. Uh, and it's not just for one day, it's gonna be July 18th through the 22nd, uh, from two to five every single day. Um, so that's gonna be extremely exciting. Um, already kids are excited about it, we've kind of, uh, told a couple of our uh, child patrons and our teen patrons, and they're excited about it. So that's another thing as well. July 15th, we're going into J July now, uh, we have a rockets program where we, we will actually be learning the science and the makeup of rockets. We will uh, even have the, the chance to do like our own mock type of rocket. That's going to be July 15th from one to three. Uh, the theme for July, uh, for those who are listening, is every Friday there's going to be a big thing that we're going to do. So rockets were, were, was one of them. The Maker Fair uh, was one of them. Um, and finally, how we're going to end July, we're going to have the Dayton Art Institute uh, on the 29th come in from one to three and actually set up some things here uh, so that the children, uh, they're going to be able to, you know, engage in that way. And so, look, I'm excited about it. Summer is going to be awesome. And that's just some of the programs that we're, uh, that we've invited to the branch. Uh, we haven't even touched on the things that we're going to be doing every day for, you know, the kids that are out and about. We have the preschool story time that's going to take place every Tuesday from 1030 to 11. Um, one of our uh, staff members, our librarian, she plays the guitar. She gets the kids involved. They're singing. They're going along with that. That's always um, very exciting. A couple of highlight things that I wanted to talk about as well. We have a Father's Day hair program uh, directly linked um, and targeted towards the African-American community. So fathers, you can bring your sons in and we can we, we get your waves going. This is it's gonna be nice. Or your fro, however you wanna go. It's gonna be a great um, information-based uh, time. We had one actually last month uh, for Mother's Day, well, not last month, this month for Mother's Day, uh, we had a hair program that was geared toward African American mothers. And so we're doing that same thing uh, on, when is it? June 17th. It's going to be June 17th here at Northwest. One more thing that I wanted to highlight. Oh, so we're also going to be having a program uh family new family movie nights are going to be monday in june mondays in june from 5 to 7 p.m so that's just going to be an open time where we're going to more than likely have popcorn for everybody we got a big projector with nice sound in our community room so you get to experience the theater experience you know everything's opening up why won't we open back up and, and do that as well um I believe, well, no, no. And this is one of my most exciting things. I actually, our um, manager here has decided to bring out the grill on a couple, uh, on a couple of our weekend uh, adventures. So we're going to be able to, again, feed the community in that way. Um, the staff have come together to really be impactful. We've come together to uh, provide 
programs that are not limiting, but will expand uh, the, the, the minds of those who come. Uh, we also have, and this is the last one, I have so much, I'm just so excited. Um, with the last one is homework help. And we know school is done, right? Who wants to deal with school? Listen, it's not just school this time. Uh, we call it STEAM, that's science, technology, engineering, and you know what that A stands for, art. We're, we're back at it with art, and I'm so happy to announce that I am actually partnering with the Homework Help Program to actually teach in that arts uh, side with music. Uh, I will be teaching music alongside Anastasia White. She is an, um, an ISA at the West Branch. We will be teaming together, teaching your children and your teens music this summer, all the way from rhythm uh, to notes to reading to um, what do you call them, modules, all those type of things. This is going to be a very engaging summer for our youth. And it's not going to be limited just to the regular. We're, we're tired of regular. Nothing's regular anymore. So we have to reach them where they are. Um, so it's a lot going on. If you want to find out more, uh, you can always look us up on, uh, if, you, if you Google Dayton Metro Library, Northwest Branch, You'll be able to see our programs, uh, what we have coming up for the month. But even better, just come on down. We have calendars every time. We have calendars every time for you um, so that you can see um, what we have going on. So if, if there are any questions, I will answer what I can because I'm super excited as you all can tell. <laughs> and we're excited that you're excited. You're so excited <laughs> that I'm excited that I got to make sure that I come to the library more well, often. Come on here. I can find the children and come to family night. And yes. I think it's really wonderful. I heard some really great things. I heard that um, artistic expression is, is a good thing that you guys are going to allow the children to engage in. And that's going to help with the anger and help yes. children to be able to learn how to resolve internal issues so they don't have to do external expression in the way of violence and what have you. And then also too, uh, it was mentioned in the chat that it's awesome that you're collaborating with community partners and other entities and you are working with the summer slide. And I'm sure Dr. Worley is going to appreciate that because the school district has to contend with summer slide every year. So right. with that, uh, and thank you. Thank you for your enthusiasm because I'm sure that everyone on this call is feeling like we want to go to not just the Dayton Metro Library, we want to go to the Northwest Library. You know? <laughs> See, right, you know, you shouldn't too. have told me that because I am extremely competitive and I shouldn't be like that. We're one big Dayton Metro Library family, but I just, we have some of the best staff here. We have some of the best thinkers and, and uh, creative incubators here as far as people. Um, and, and we love providing for our community, even to the point where we are taking suggestions from what people are saying. And then boom, a month or two later, we're able to give them a program that is um, not only catered to them, but actually a lot of people can engage in. And so I would definitely say that's one of our strengths. But yes, this is this is very exciting, and I do hope that every last one of you get to come out and experience Northwest. Well, continue and to stay excited. Years. Continue to stay excited. Continue to stay passionate, and then continue to focus on involving the family um, in the participation of the children and the activities. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Fuqua has a program also that uh, I, I know that uh, the community would benefit from knowing about. So Mr. Fuqua, would you please share with us about the Montgomery County Male and Female Leadership Academies? And excuse me, before Brother Fuqua goes, uh, Brother Jenkins, do you know a Brandy Forward up there at Northwest? Yes, and she told me to tell you hi. Okay. <laughs> All right, All right. I, I thought you would know her, so okay. <laughs> And, this, and, and before we go to Mr. Fuqua, there's nothing wrong with you having pride in Maybe. your Northwest library and in your community and in your coworkers. We love the Dayton Metro, but we especially love your pride in your branch. But we know you would be great <laughs> whatever branch you are working in. Mr. Fuqua. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, NAACP and Ms. White. Um, I'd like to take this time to introduce the program to you. We've been um, open for three years. 
Uh, we are housed at the uh, Montgomery County Employment Opportunity Center at 4303 West Third Street at, in West Town. It's one of the best kept secrets. People, please come out and support and find out all the other um, available community services that we provide. But I'm here to talk about the Montgomery County male and female uh, leadership program. Um, we are a year round program and we service young men and young women between the ages of 14 and 18 throughout Montgomery County. We are a free program. There is no charge to get my program. We have roughly uh, 25 young men and we have about 27, 28 young females in our program. Um, we do uh, community service throughout um, Montgomery County. Uh, I believe in um, July, early July, we will be at the uh, food bank helping them pack lunches uh, to give out to the community. Uh, we have a, an amazing event coming up July 23rd. Please everybody listen, July 23rd, we are doing a Youth Leadership Summit. It will be held down at the Sinclair Community College from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We have Ron Hunter as our DJ. We have as our keynote speaker, Jeremy Anderson coming to speak with us. We have several breakout sessions, uh, which would include uh, mental health, um, uh, the technical career side. So definitely, if you want to know more information, get in contact with me. Uh, I can uh, give you my email address. It is my last name, F as in Frank, U-Q-U-A, O as in Oscar, at mcohio.org. Now, to tell you a little bit more about the program, our program is pillared upon three things. That is uh, character, soft skills, and leadership. We believe that character gets you inside of the door. Soft skills keep you inside of that door. And that leadership component allows you to bring somebody through the door with you. Uh, we do, uh, as a matter of fact, we meet the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. So tomorrow we will be at the uh, Gym City Market where my young men will be learning how to uh, make uh, soul food, uh, yeah, soul food um, egg rolls. And uh, Chef uh, Thomas Johnson will be uh, directing us in that. And I think that's gonna be a lot of fun for us. Uh, and on uh, the second and fourth Thursday of every month, the ladies meet. This Thursday, they will be doing a paint and uh, paint murals. So that's going to be a lot of fun for, the, for our young women. And, you know, several months, several weeks ago, um, we did a CPR training at the EOC and um, the firefighters Fired or Fighters LLC uh, gave us that CPR and uh, our young men and young women were able to get certified in CPR at that time. We love to collaborate with other programs. Um, man, I, after following uh, the young man uh, about the um, library, I want to take my young people down to the library and see everything they have to offer. Um, definitely. If you have any questions, get with me. I can give you my, my number right now, 937-715-1469 if you have any questions. I'm trying not to take up uh, a lot of time, so I'm allow if anybody has any questions, go ahead and um, shoot some questions at me. How do you get the referrals from the students? Thank you for what you're doing, but how do you get referrals for the students to be in part of your program? Actually started because we are, uh, we were housed at the job center. So we were able to work with uh, YCF the Youth uh, Center and they were providing us uh, names. We go out 
to uh, community um, schools, the DPS, Trotwood. Um, as a matter of fact, we were up uh, today at Meadowdale High School um, talking about our summit that uh, we're having on July 23rd, getting uh, young people signed up for that event. This is going to be a spectacular event. Um, I don't think uh, Dayton has had uh, a youth summit quite this large. So please come out and support it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Fuqua. And one of the outcomes of this event tonight is, um, desired outcomes, I should say, is uh, collaboration. And so certainly first and foremost, you know, those of you that are presenting, you hear the various opportunities and uh, information to be able to connect with each other. But more importantly, we'd like for everyone that's in Facebook land, everyone that's on this Zoom call, to please make sure that you spread the word about the wonderful uh, activities that's going on and that present as alternatives to our young people engaging in destructive behavior when they can become a part of constructive behavior. So we're gonna move on now and we're gonna hear from Dr. Worley, um, who I've already shared with you his department. And so Dr. Worley, would you share with us um, some valuable information? Yes, thank you for having me, uh, President Ford and Ms. White. Uh, I am over, like Ms. White said, over the Office of Cultural Engagement and Inclusion, which is actually a new uh, name for our program because Males of Color has been around for six years and we've just added uh, Females of Color. So they just finished their first year um, under our program. I'm very excited about that. Uh, one of the things we focus on is brotherhood, sisterhood, scholarship, integrity, and an honor. And I'm excited because we just finished up our Females of Color uh, Scholarship Awards and our Males of Color Scholarships Awards this past week. We gave out five scholarships to five deserving distinguished young ladies and five scholarships to five distinguished young men. And so we were very excited about that. We just also completed our barbershop talk where we had various uh, dignitaries and businessmen come out uh, um, to one of our local barbershops where some of our high school young had casual talk and we recorded and you can find it on our Facebook page, Males of Color. And also we did a beauty salon talk. We just finished up and did the same format in one of our beauty salons and opponents high school. And so we're excited about that. One of the things we have coming this summer, uh, June 6th through the 17th, and we just closed our registration is our, our summer camp from grades uh, five to the 10th grade. And with some of the various things we'll be doing, we're taking some kids to COSI, we're taking some kids to Brigadier General's house up in uh, Xenia. We're taking some kids to the Air Force Museum and Paul Lawrence Dunbar. And then on the 18th, we're having a special day that Saturday where we're collaborating with Metro Parks and we're taking our students fishing. And that is open to the public. We're gonna be at Possum Creek. We're gonna have a grill out there and we're just gonna put all the, the cell phones and iPads away. And we're just gonna have casual talk and, and teach our young boys and our young ladies how to fish and have a good time with nature uh, with that Metro Parks piece. And they're gonna get um, fishing poles and um, they're gonna learn all the natures and break up into different groups on that situation. But some of the things that we do with cultural engagement and inclusion, we just not just do the, the barbershop or the beauty salon, we talk about agricultural science, our financial academy that's, that's rolling out this year. Um, we do Saturday engagements where we have our kids come into some of our, our high schools and we just play basketball, uh, kickball, volleyball, and we talk about some of the social issues that they're having and some of the challenges they're having and how we can keep some peace in our schools as well as in our community. And so we bring in special guests to come and talk to them. And then we are really excited about this transform consulting collaboration. We just teamed up for a hundred students uh, from 10th grade, 11th grade, uh, where we'll collaborate with them, with business leaders, community leaders, organizations that want to have be a career mentor with them for the next couple of years. They will also team up with our life coaches and talk about how to prepare our students. Our mantra is positioning our students for a positive future. And we believe in giving them that opportunity to learn about their careers, experience their careers, and be equipped to go out into the, the public sector and be positive citizens in our community. So those are just some highlights of some of the things that we've done. Feel free to go to our Office of Females of Color page or Office of Males of Color 
Facebook page and learn about all the different things that we do um, day in and day out. But one of the key things that I'm really excited about is our Tuesday tie day and our tailored Tuesday that we do every first and third uh, Tuesday where our young men wear their ties and we talk about morals, we talk about having proper eye contact and handshakes and how to treat our young ladies and how to treat one another respectfully. And our ladies do the same thing with their tailored Tuesday. They may not want to wear a dress, so they wear a uh, pantsuits and they do the same thing. And we talk about etiquette and how to treat one another and cut and get rid of some of this dogmatic talk and some of these um, things that they, they're dealing with with some of their peers and fighting. We want them to be peaceful in, in the classroom, peaceful on our campuses and peaceful in our communities. But I'm definitely going to bring some of our kids down to David over at the library because I'm excited about some of those things and he made me excited about them as well. And I definitely want to connect with Mr. Fuqua. This is great because what we're talking about now and make the connections that we're making is going to be about that transformation that's necessary for us to stop the violence on violence with each other, particularly in our residential areas, particularly in our schools and our communities and what have you. So I, I'm really excited because all I can hear and is hope hope and I see transformation. And in order for us to move from the condition that we're in to a condition that we don't have to be in is to engage in the process of transformation. And I think it's important, I'm hearing all of you all say to our young people in various ways with your programming that you don't have to stay in the condition that you're in. If you're angry, you don't have to use a gun. If you're angry, you don't have to use your fist. If you're angry, you don't have to use uh, hurtful words. You know, so uh, we've heard from gentlemen. Let's go to a lady, Miss Karen Ms. Pruitt. Hey, I'm sorry, I have one more thing I wanted to ask. Oh, sure, by all means, because please yeah, forgive me. We do. Call. We have also added my brother's keeper, Dayton, to under our umbrella as well. We um, utilize that where we take our young men and our young ladies that are in the 12th grade, about to graduate, up to age 25, and we equip them. And so they do a lot of peer-to-peer -peer mentoring with some of our high school students and, and lower grades. And so we're, this is their first year as well, actually the first three or four months that we've been putting that piece together as well. So I'm excited about that as well. Okay, awesome. Ms. Pruitt? Good evening, Dr. Forward, officers, Madam Chair. With your permission, may I share our four community outreach programs? other than just our summer art camp, because we did add a new camp this year. Yes. With the request of Lutheran Social Services. Uh, first of all, we have the Dayton Scholars Program that will be going on June 13th through July 22nd. And all of this information will be on our website at stmargaretsdayton.org because there are application forms and all of that if you're interested in being involved. The first one, Dayton Scholars, they do have a job announcement for their summer program. Their program is a community-based math, social, emotional literacy program serving elementary school age children in Dayton who need reading instruction. And these students usually have a phenomenal time during the six, those weeks that they're together. That information is on our website. The application is on our website. This is a six week program and it runs 8 a.m. in the morning to 12.30 p.m. and the rest of the day they have other activities. And I wanted to make sure I shared that with you. The second program, which is a new camp, we were approached by Lutheran Social Services National Office. They did, had an agenda to have three of their Camp NOAHs in the Miami Valley area. One was done last year in Beaver Creek one in North Dayton, and they wanted one in Trotwood, where St. Margaret's is. They approached Father Ben and myself, and we agreed to host the third camp for them this year. 
For those of you who have never heard of Camp NOAA, it is owned by Lutheran Social Services of Minnesota. It began in 1997 as a response to the flooding in the Red River Valley of North Dakota in Minnesota. This program is designed to help children K through fifth grade to deal with trauma. Wonderful curriculum. They have their own curriculum, all of their own supplies, just a novel way of helping them to deal with their emotions. The trauma that has gone on in Dayton with the tornadoes, with the shootings in the Oregon district, with the racial issues that have caused them, you know, to be fearful and afraid and not knowing how to really communicate with one another. That will be June 13th through the 17th. Our registration for that is all online. If anyone would like to send their child or friend's child, the registration form is online, or you can contact me, Carol Pruitt, because I am the um, director of this one also. And if you would like a hard copy as opposed to going online to fill out the information, I will make sure that that gets to you. Each day, there is a theme, a phenomenal curriculum again. You, we talk about social emotional dealings and, and dealing with all of the fear and, and problems that are going on in our society with the children. I am somebody special. Storm stories. Why am I feeling this way? I can do that. And can I help you? So a lot of emotional, social positioning and learning to deal with those feelings. And I'm looking forward to that camp. I've heard of it, but I've heard it's been extremely successful. Our art camp, our annual art camp, this will be the 17th or 18th year for St. Margaret's Summer Art Camp. We have a theme each year. This year, it is the art of climate change. Acronyms, community, learning, innovation, music, arts, technology, and education. And for those who do not know, St. Margaret's Camp was started as a peace camp years ago. And we still keep that peace part in. As you can see from our flyer here, our peace workshop instructor is none other than Mr. Shack, And the students really, really love uh, what he has them get involved with. Our music director is Darren Bell. He also in, has incorporated the social emotional with his music ed, ed, that the state had adopted for the schools. Lauren Gruber is a longtime artist from Dayton Public Schools who has been with us several years. And we also have Katie Nugent, who is an art instructor with Huber High Schools out here by me. And then Simeon Oyeyemi, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, is the drawing instructor. And Simeon has lots of works over there at Central State uh, Dayton, up on the second or third floor, I believe. And the students love him. Gregory Tucker offers the videography class. The students love that outcome. Mrs. Wise is one of our older members of our church who has been doing arts and craft for many years. And the things they get involved with, they really, really appreciate that. As you can see our schedule there, we start in the morning with the free breakfast and we have the free lunch for them. On Wednesday, we have a field trip for them. We've been to the Boone Shaw, the, the Air Force Museum. Someone mentioned the facility in Columbus, which is something we're contemplating this year also. But we try to keep them involved, emphasizing the de developmental characteristics for them. Our age group is four through eight. And some of the things they deal with, we try to resolve through art. And some of them are great artists. On Friday, we do have 
an evening program where the community leaders, parents, and friends, family and friends come in for the program where they showcase their work. And we have partnered with AVAG. They offer gift cards to our category of win winners. We have categories for the artists and they offer gift cards to them to the art store. And not only that, we make sure that they stay involved with us throughout the year in case we want to do some special fundraising or do any other community events. The mayor usually comes each first day of Trotwood and welcomes them. But we just have so much fun having all of our dance classes. And I did not, I forgot our dance instructor. We usually have Miss Aaliyah Nellums. However, she has graduated from college and moved to Atlanta. She was with DCDC too. And now we have a young lady by the name of Janae Yadell who helped her last year with the uh, dance class. The other information I wanted to share after the art camp, immediately following the next week, we have our STEM camp. And that is also a week long. However, only 12 students are allowed in that class. They get very involved, very technical. The students love learning about science and technology. And following that, I would like to share the Ready for Work program. We have a lot of fun in the other camps, but we also have this ongoing Ready for Work program that's sponsored by Montgomery County Job Center and conducted by our CDC at our church. And it's designed to assist participants in navigating employment barriers by teaching them how to prepare a resume, take an interview and all of those other skills that are needed. Focus is usually put on managing your finances some financial literacy for them. So while the students are having fun between K and five, four through eight and beyond for the Ready for Work program, we want to make sure they're equipped social emotionally and professionally as they move forward to be happy, healthy and whole in their futures. Thank you, Carol. Um, you have an all-star lineup as do all of the programs that have been presented tonight. But I do want to say that you have one young man in there that's particularly special to us in the NAACP. And uh, he is very active with the AXO program and that's sending in, oh yeah, yeah, me. Oh yeah. And, uh, so yeah, so we definitely want to acknowledge that and acknowledge his association with the uh, NAACP Dayton unit. And also too, I'm gonna give a plug for Chairman McGee. We have two young people that are going to be going to our national convention. They are gold winners at this level and we're hoping that they're gonna bring the gold home back to Dayton. So, uh, and I really appreciate the fact that your program, Carol, is focusing on social emotional learning because mm -hmm. you're absolutely right with what we have experienced and all that's going on, particularly with the crime rates, um, you know, that children are um, being exposed to. Um, it's important that the social emotional aspect of their development is addressed. All right, so we're gonna go now to a gentleman and I'm not gonna steal his thunder, but he's gonna tell you he has the best job. He's at his retirement job and he loves what he's doing. Isn't that right, Mr. Malcolm Key? Yes, she is correct with saying that. Uh, I've been blessed uh, to have the best job in Montgomery County, probably the state of Ohio, because I love uh, what I do. Um, I am the uh, director of a high school Christian mentoring program called Dayton Urban Young Life. Um, I oversee 19 volunteers that um, what we do, we go into the world of teenagers and we build relationships. And uh, once the relationships are, are, are centered, uh, we invite them to a weekly uh, gathering at the Dayton Metro Library on Mondays. Our, our mission is to uh, share the gospel of Christ with a teenager and help them grow in their faith. And if they accept the gospel, fine. And if they don't, fine. Uh, we still help them graduate high school and walk them into college or career. And uh, once a week uh, during the school, 
uh, session for 33 straight Mondays. Um, we'll have a, uh, a session at the library from 6 to 7 p.m. for any high school kid that want to learn anything about the Bible or God or, or just uh, questions about God itself, himself. Uh, they would come from 6 to 7. Uh, for the kids that uh, just want to come for a, a party, get together and socialize, and they will show up at seven and uh, stay till uh, eight thirty. Um, during that time, we we were playing music, socializing, playing games, uh, and we end the night with a meal and feed them and uh, um, and repeat the same thing uh, for the next uh, thirty two uh, weeks. During the week, our leaders. Uh, uh, we, 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 we have activities uh, from everything from uh, flying kites, riding bikes, bowling, the movies. Our leaders pick up their mentees and they take them to, uh, to football games, basketball games, uh, anything that, that, that can take a kid away from his, his or her environment and just uh, have some time together with an a educated uh, college uh, save Christian and, and, and we just, just hang out with them. Our leaders volunteers two to six hours a week with the kids. Uh, we, we try to meet each kid in the ninth grade and spend the next four years with them. And, uh, I get to manage and coordinate all of that. Uh, our summer programs, uh, for the most part, um, we have two big, uh, camping trips that take place. Um, uh, and, and both of them last an entire week. Um, the one is for high school kids any, in any ninth through 12th grade, uh, where uh, we take them to a Young Life camp. This, this year, we're going to Goshen, Virginia. Young Life owns 26 campsites in the United States, and they're actually not campsites. They're actually resorts. Uh, picture uh, picture a, a, a resort with uh, where 500-some-odd uh, teens come every week, and uh, all the cell phones are taken. And uh, from uh, as soon as you get off the bus till the time you get back on the bus, there's nonstop fun, uh, nonstop games, nonstop uh, rides. Uh, each night, uh, each team will hear uh, uh, a message about Christ. And uh, one of the best parts about the camp for me that takes place is something called cabin time. And what cabin time is really is myself and another male leader. We'll have like 12 boys in our cabin and we'll discuss everything that just took place during that course of that day and the message that was just delivered. And we'll spend anywhere from like 12 midnight to about two o'clock in the morning talking about life and what we just learned. And then we repeat the process the very next day. Um, that camp takes place July the 13th through July the 19th. Uh, we're going to Goshen, Virginia. And right after that, we have a teen moms camp uh, because we have a ministry <laughs> called Young Lives is for our teenage mothers and their, their children. Um, they have a, a camp themselves where mm -hmm. we take uh, our teen moms. We're going to Lake Placid, I mean, Lake City, Michigan, uh, this particular year. And the beauty of that camp is um, the teen moms, we're taking 10 teen moms and their children, and we're taking three daycare providers. So when the kids, when those teen moms go to the camp, they can be a teenager again because we're going to have actually three of our, our, our uh, daycare providers actually watch their kids for an entire week. And we're also going with three adult leaders. Uh, those are the two major things that takes place every year with Young Life. And the beauty of those particular camps, they're, they're cost anywhere between seven and $800 a piece. And we're so blessed that uh, we have donations from, from across Montgomery County that, that raise uh, uh, our particular committee raises the funds for our kids to go uh, free of charge. It's just a matter of first come first serve uh, to attend these particular camps. Uh, on the calendar for this particular summer also something the kids love to do. We have 18 bikes. And on Sundays, we, we take a bike ride from one of the Dayton Metro parks to another Dayton Metro park. And when we reach our destination, we start a book club or, or we start reading a book. We'll spend the next two, two and a half hours reading the first few chapters of a book. We'll order some food, we'll eat, talk about the book some more, then ride back to our home destination. And before you know it, four to five hours has, has, has taken place on a uh, particular Sunday and the kids love that. 
Those dates are June 26th, July the 10th, July the 24th, and um, July the 31st. Um, and something that's just on the table um, that, that literally took place last week, um, I had a meeting with uh, Central State University. Um, they have some funding to uh, put on a ninth grade summer transition program for an entire week where uh, uh, we'll have brand new incoming freshmen uh, that's uh, starting high school. They'll be bused out to Central State for five straight days uh, to participate in a summer transition program. Uh, that's something that's on the calendar for the first week of August. How many students and, and uh, are going to participate in this? That's still up in the air, and we're still in the planning stages for that. Um, but one day you can circle on your calendar is August the 13th. Um, the actual locations, we haven't uh, pinned that down yet, but we're going to have a ninth grade Algebra 1 party. And our, our, what we're going to do is take college students, tutors from Central State, Wright State, and the University of Dayton, and we're going to have a party where they're going to meet brand new incoming freshmen uh, and, and, and build relationships with those individuals. So when school starts on August the 16th, uh, the very next week, uh, those students that attend that party will have their own personal tutor to start uh, uh, getting help with homework assignments for the next 33 weeks of the school year. Our whole goal is to uh, have ninth graders pass that in the course exam. Uh, that's a killer. Uh, it's, it's literally drowning our kids into, into starting the thought process of dropping out of high school when they fail Algebra 1 that first year. And our whole goal is to have 100% passage of every kid that attends the Algebra One party. Uh, if you want to know of any uh, thing that's happening with our organization during the summer and into next year, just go to our website. It's duyl.org. And uh, with that, we have a calendar that you can uh, check out and uh, see all the activities that's taking place. And there is really no joining or, 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 or how can I say, a membership role or whatever. It's almost, we're almost like the body of Christ. You just come as you are and we accept you and, and, and attach you to uh, 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 an adult seasoned Christian. And um, that's uh, our program in a nutshell. Wow, thank you. That was um, very powerful information. We're going to move on now to um, our next presenter. The Dayton NAACP does have um, youth and leadership development components. So to tell us about um, our children's uh, development program is going to be Pam Sloan, who is the advisor for the Little John Jr. NAACP Youth Council. She may be trying to get on, so until she, um, she, she is on, but until she can connect, we're going to go to the uh, co-advisor for the uh, Move Forward Thurgood March, Marshall in AACP High School chapter and also the uh, Dayton Youth Council, Ms. Tawana Branham. Good evening. Thank you, Ms. White and Dr. Forward for allowing me to be uh, a part of this panel. It definitely takes a village uh, to raise a child. And I have been so inspired this afternoon or this evening with um, everyone who has spoken. And uh, so it makes me uh, definitely want to um, make sure that our students um, in the Dayton NAACP are actually um, involved with the, the library and with males of color, uh, females of color, um, as well as Metro Parks. So thank you. And Mr. Mr. Keith as well. So um, as Ms. White said, I am uh, the co-advisor for uh, Move Forward uh, Thurgood Marshall High School Chapter, which is um, uh, one of the only high school chapters here in Dayton, Ohio. So it was actually uh, named um, after our uh, president, uh, Dr. Uh, Derek L. Forward. Um, and so we actually don't offer any programming uh, during the summer, uh, but, but in the fall, uh, we do a lot with our students. Uh, we teach them leadership skills. Uh, we teach them um, how to um, go out into the community and to serve, to give back. Um, so we definitely are working on our mission is to uh, create um, and inspire uh, the next generation of civil rights leaders. 
Um, I'm also the co-advisor for the Dayton uh, Youth Council. And so the age begins from uh, age 14 to 17. If a student uh, is in college, uh, we definitely will uh, keep them uh, in that uh, capacity up until the age of 25. So we do a lot of leadership training. Uh, we, um, we also do fun things uh, with the kids as well. We meet for the first hour. Uh, usually it's the second Saturday of the month. And, um, but then the second hour we feed them, but, and we also teach them other skills such as social skills. Um, we teach them uh, financial literacy. Um, we teach them um, how to sew. Um, and we also um, are working on the students with phone etiquette. Um, that's something that is so important. Um, our students are always uh, on the cell phone, but again, how many of our you know, youth know how to actually talk um, properly on the phone? And so we also deal with um, or help them learn social skills. So many of our students um, are dealing um, as um, the panelists um, also emphasize with trauma. There's so much that has gone on in our community and with the gun violence, um, with the tornadoes in 2019, uh, with the, the Oregon district um, shootings, uh, just so much that our students face every night that we don't know. And so we definitely try to connect them um, within the organization with someone who can be their support system. And so we do offer that. We are here for our students and for our youth in this community. Um, the next thing, um, I also wanted to talk about the Little John Junior Youth Council. And so we actually have, our members there are from birth um, to 13. And we also teach them uh, leadership skills as well as um, 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 community service skills. Um, so some of the activities that we have actually planned for this summer um, our next meeting will be on June the 11th at 1 p.m. And so it's actually a series. It's a lunch and learn um, where our students can learn uh, various skills on various topics. Um, and so some of the other things that we are going to do, like I said, financial literacy. Uh, we also want to teach our students about uh, prominent civil rights leaders um, that um, have served in our community and ones who are still serving in our community. Um, we also um, want to um, teach um, our young people um, how, to, um, how to handle their money. Um, and that's something that a, a lot of our students, they know how to cash app, um, but they don't know how to uh, use a credit card. They don't know how to use a debit card. They don't know how to save money. Um, they don't know how to budget. And so um, these are things that, um, as leaders in the community, it is our job um, to uh, make sure that we equip our students with the life skills that they need in order to go out and be productive citizens. Um, in the Move Forward uh, Thurgood uh, Marshall chapter, um, we have several, um, we've done several things such as we've had the lunch and learn with a cop. And we actually had the Dayton uh, Police Department, they came out and they sat with our young people and they talked to them about how to engage um, in or how to act properly um, or engage with, the, I should say, uh, community policing. Um, and so they had that conversation and this is actually a continued conversation. Um, we've done a lot of community service. Uh, we've given back. Um, we went down to our headquarters at 915 Salem Avenue and the students, they dug down dirty cleaning and trying to beautify our building. And so these are all things and we don't just tell them, we show them. Um, and so again, um, these are all programs. Again, our, we also have, like I said, our Move Forward, the Urban Marshall High School chapter, our uh, Little John Junior Youth chapter, and then we have our Dayton Youth uh, Council chapter. And so we're just excited. Um, and we also um, are trying to partner with Metro Parks. Um, and I don't know if you guys heard of the, the Garden to Go project, um, but I know it's at the Gym City Markets. I think they are trying to get that up and running, but where you can actually, the students can take home um, a five gallon bucket with everything they need to have their own little mini garden. So we're gonna actually uh, partner with them as well. So again, my name is Tawana Branham. And like I said, our next meeting uh, will be June 11th um, at 1 p.m. down at 915 Salem Avenue for our Dayton Youth 
uh, chapter as well as our Little John Junior Youth Council. So thank you, Ms. White. Thank you, and um, you have touched on the various programs that are uh, within the Dayton NAACP, and also I uh, just want to um, just reiterate and note for you that you saw various programs running on the screen, and um, we do have some uh, collegiate chapters also, so the work with young people is post-secondary. And uh, so um, Ms. Sloan is on much of what um, has been shared. I'll give her an opportunity if she wanted to add anything, but I certainly want to acknowledge Ms. Sloan as one of the um, advisors for the Little John Junior Group. So Ms. Sloan, if you have something to say, you can come on your screen. If not, I'm going to uh, end our presentation with Ms. Kenya Baker, Ms. Sloan. All right, well, we'll just go to Ms. Baker. This has been a very robust conversation and uh, we're gonna round it out with you. Last, but certainly not least. Hi, my name is Kenya Baker and I am the executive director for Unify Power. I just wanted to share with everyone the opportunity to get your teens engaged this coming weekend. We're going to have four powerful workshops and we're gonna kick African Liberation Day celebrations off on Friday from six to 7.30. You can bring your teens to the Gym City Market Community Room on May 27th. And we're going to have a national keynote speaker, Dr. Kaba Kamini, who will be talking about melanin as it relates to science. A lot of our African-American males and females don't understand the chemistry of who they are. And Dr. Kaba Kamini will be helping us to understand our chemistry by delving into melatonin and its scientific implications. So I invite you all to please either join us in the community room or you can reach out to me at Dayton Unified Power at gmail.com and I will send you a link. So if you would like to view it virtually, that option will be available. It is a free webinar. And then on that Saturday, we will have a parade with Women in Tool and several other organizations leaving from Gym City Market and traveling to Liberation Park, formerly known as Dayton View Park, on the corner of Broadway and Superior. And I invite you all to join us for this celebration of African and liberation on May 28th. We're gonna have urban farmers there. We'll have some political candidates there. We'll also have a health and wellness section and we'll have a section with money and financial literacy. So you can learn more about cryptocurrency and how to invest. There will be food trucks and vendors. So this is a great opportunity to get your teams engaged, get them out and learning more about urban agriculture, political power, health and wellness, as well as money. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank all of you. And before President Forward comes to close us out, I want to say um, thank you very much for your participation and your time. Um, there's been a wealth of information that's been shared. Uh, the uh, function of the NAACP Dayton Unit is to inform, educate, and empower. And we certainly have received information to help us to do all of that. And with all that's been provided today, and there are certainly more agencies and organizations and programs that could have been invited, but we want to, we, we have a good start tonight with uh, programs that can take our young people off the street from a lane of negativity to a highway of positivity. I heard tonight that we had schools, social agencies, faith-based programs, you know, through our churches and businesses connecting. I encourage you that were on the panel tonight to, you stated that you uh, would like to reach out to each other. Please let's do that because it's necessary for us to be circular, circular in our interactions and um, provide those um, connections on behalf of families and young people. 
So again, thank you so much. And I want to apologize for the mix up in the time. Please charge it to my head and not my heart. You know, when you become a senior citizen, things just don't flow well for you. So I'm gonna play my senior citizen Buckeye card. And so Madam with Chair, that, with may that, I, I'm sorry. Madam Chair, may I add one more thing for our summer art camp at St. Margaret's? Yes, We please. do have volunteers, uh, mentors, that we solicit each year, ninth through 12th grade and college students. And we do offer community service hours for them. So that will be great opportunities for Mr. Mufuqua, Mr. Uh, Keats program and several others there. And so I just want to um, leave with a question not to be answered in this form. I'm gonna reach out to each of you because we're going to collect more information. It's been put in the chat and requested that um, there be a compilation of the information that's been provided here so that our community at large can access this. And I'm going to ask each one tell one, it would be a shame for all of this wonderful information not to get out to the masses of our uh, young people and their families. And my question that I'd like to pose is, do any of you uh, in your programs connect with the juvenile detention center? And as I said, I'm gonna leave that as a question, pin that um, and get back with you with regards to um, your responses. And if not, how we can connect with those young people who definitely need support uh, from the various programs that you are offering. So with that, I'm going to close out with a wonderful thank you to all of you and turn it over to our president for closure. Ms. Maddie. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, oh. uh, Sloan, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I have been on the call and I'm sorry that I couldn't get my phone unmuted because I was driving, but I would just like to say for all our youth councils of the NAACP, we are open for a membership enrollment. So we would, send out to your organizations um, that information so that we can gain more memberships for our youth groups. Okay, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Um, I, I would like for Ms. Baker, because uh, I was highly impressed uh, with the program that she has. Uh, you know, it's actually a, a program where she gets people out and have them to go up and down, uh, you know, various sectors of our community to clean. And if she can talk to us about that, uh, you know, cause, cause I think that's, I think that's very enriching. I think that more people need to do that. More organizations need to do it. So can you talk to us about that a little bit? Yes, well, it started actually as a senior. I started it as a senior at Wilberforce University, the first private black HBCU in the country. Um, as I senior there, I believed and did some research around how litter affects our mental. And I worked with a group of children and empowered them to be leaders. And we walked the streets, picked up trash, and we also gardened. And it was called the ecological team. And now I still do that, um, clean, picking up trash and gardening. We have 12 plots in DeSoto Bass that we garden and we pick up trash. So if anyone is interested in that, you can reach out to me. I will put my phone number in the chat. And I do believe that. Um, Miss White is compiling a list of everyone's names, email addresses, and programs so that we can do some information sharing. But I think it's very critical that children understand the impact of their environment and their mental. If they live in a nasty environment, I think their behavior is nasty. So I've had children out picking up trash. We've picked up anywhere from 10 to 12 bags of trash on Salem Avenue corridor alone in one, one setting. So it's very, that's a very good enriching activity. And I encourage all of the youth leaders here to do some cleanups, community cleanups. And I have various connections for you all to link with. I love West Dayton or Sister Baby Solutions and uh, kind of like following those footsteps. Thank you. Thank you for working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Ms. Baker. I, you know, I thought that was pretty powerful. I, you know, I have a lady who lives down the street from me. She likes, she's like 83. And, and uh, she took our youth, one of our youth uh, groups out and uh, had them painting, uh, you know, the curbs and, and stripes, like so they're teaching them how to go out and have an honest living, you know. And uh, so, so, so basically, it reminded me when I saw you. It reminded me of that 
that type of uh, uh, you know leadership and youth development in terms of economics. So, uh, so I just want to applaud you for that. And then also for all the other uh, young men uh, uh, and young ladies on the call, um, I would encourage you, because I heard several of you talk about that you are going to take them here, you're going to take them there. Uh, but the NAACP uh, is probably the oldest institution, or at least we're the oldest civil and human rights institution in the Dayton region at 107 years old. Uh, so uh, I would hope that you would include us uh, in your visits and your tours as you're taking uh, your students to these various places uh, and having them to be engaged uh, in various learning uh, uh, opportunities. Yes. So I think if you can include us so they can come down to our headquarters, the ACC Dayton headquarters located uh, at 915 Salem Avenue across the street from uh, United, Grace United Methodist Church. I think that'd be a great opportunity uh, to know to let them know about civil and human rights. Uh, you know, not just wait, don't wait until something happens to get them involved with us. That's why we created a proactive civil rights agenda, such as what's happening tonight, because we want to be able to educate people on the front end of civil rights versus waiting on some on the back end that happened to them, and then they come down to our office and file a grievance. File a complaint. No, we want. We are the oldest, the boldest, the biggest, the baddest, the toughest, the roughest, the greenest, the meanest, and we organization out here. And we want to make certain that you engage us, that you engage your people with us, so that they will understand the work that we do. And I also told uh, the naturalization department that as well for the city of Dayton, uh, there are many organizations uh, that uh, that are inside like a little gift bag. Uh, but they don't have the NAACP in that gift bag. And I told them that we're going to give them some literature so that as citizens come into our community, that they know about uh, the NAACP. You know, we are the mothership. Uh, and, uh, and at the end of the day, but we like to collaborate because without collaborations, uh, without us being together, just like what our first VP and community coordination chair did this past weekend, just as for us by us, that's the name that she gave it, uh, you know, that uh, that we need to come together as a people, uh, you know, so that when it comes time for voting, when it comes time for education opportunities, when it comes down for health care disparities, you know, no, we're not going to agree on everything. But be rest assured that we can come together on some things and the things that we come together on, uh, we, we have a mighty voice and we have the votes to back it up. So with that, until the next time, uh, may God bless you, may God bless the NAACP, and may God bless these United States of America. Have a good night, everybody. Take care. God bless. Good night, everyone.